So this image here was shot on a full frame Lumix S5. And as you can see, I shot to retain as much detail as I can in the highlights, knowing that I can bring back the exposure in the shadows. What I have started doing is using the AI masking tools in Lightroom to bring back exposure in the shadows while maintaining all of the detail in the highlights. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two use cases and how I use backlit photos like this and the masking tools to maximize dynamic range in the photos. And from there, you guys can use your imagination and incorporate these tools into your editing workflow. My name is Alex, and if you guys are new to the channel, I love taking photos and videos of cars and bringing you guys behind the scenes into the process. Now, I am not a know-it-all by any means, but I'd love it if you guys would subscribe and be a part of the community and let me know what you guys think down in the comments and teach us as we go along here. I think we all have valuable things to add to the conversation, but I really do appreciate your guys' time, so let's dive into Lightroom right away and learn a couple tools here. So the first thing that I wanna do in this photo is we're gonna come up to our masking panel here. And what I'm gonna do is use the AI to select the sky. So you can see it does a great job there. I don't really have to tell it to do anything, but what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna come up to these three dots in the masking panel click that and we're going to invert the mask. Now essentially what this is doing is just lighting everything in front of the sky because it's super backlit. So what we're gonna do here is really quite simple. Bring the exposure up here and sometimes you're actually gonna need to bring the highlights back down just to make sure you're not overexposing any of the little details there. I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit but I'm always looking to make a balanced image here. And as you can see, we're balancing a lot more of the highlights and the lowlights. We have a lot more details, but what's beautiful about this process is if you click out of the masking panel, we haven't even touched our tone curves yet. So now we can start fiddling around with the tone curves and make this edit as bright, as dark, or whatever as we want. And we can still bring out the details in the shadows of the car here, still boost up our whites if we want to because we've retained that information. So we're gonna try and retain a bunch of the highlights here if we can. Obviously that sun is going to be blown out and that's totally okay. If you hold option while you drag down your blacks, you can figure out where your black point is and you can see there those dark blue parts is where it's going to be completely black and information is lost. If I come over to the toolkit that I've built here, I'm just gonna add a bit of color grading. So I'm gonna go with the classic warm and that just adjusts the color grading panel. And that just saves me a ton of time and having to go into all these shadows, midtones, and highlights and dialing these things in. I have those preset in my toolkit over here. As well as sharpening, we'll just add a quick sharpening preset here. And then I've also preset a bunch of these masks that I typically use. So I am often darkening the lower part. I might darken the top as well to bring more of our eye down to the car. And then here I have a preset for the AI to select the car or the subject in the photo and help that to pop out of the image. From here guys, I'm just gonna add a touch of contrast until this photo is looking really good. And I think that looks pretty good there and the car is popping off pretty good. So in this photo of the interior of the car, this is a great example of knowing and understanding what your camera sensor is capable of. Now I know the Lumix can handle shadows and highlights quite well, because if you look here, I can drag the highlights down and I'm gonna retain a lot and all of that information in the sky. And what you'll see very soon is that we still have all of the details in the shadow as well. So this is why I highly recommend at all times shooting in raw, because otherwise you would have to pick either your interior being exposed or your exterior and not being able to get those details back if you shot in JPEG. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna throw on a quick preset. I find that the Moody presets in my V1 pack work quite well for interiors. So there you go, you can see that we've got our highlights exposed properly outside, and now we're just gonna go up and do that same trick. So I'm gonna hit masks here, we're gonna get the AI to select the sky, and it didn't do a perfect job here, so I'm actually gonna add to that mask with a brush. So we're just gonna come over here and paint these highlight areas and the stuff that's all on the windshield into this mask here so that when we invert it, we're not gonna be using any of those details. Now, I'm just gonna be general here, but one cool thing you can do is if you hold Option, it'll subtract from the mask that you are currently selected. So I can just kind of subtract generally off the steering wheel here and any of these details that I don't really wanna be affected and you can just do a really quick job here. But then we're gonna come up to the three little dots here. We're gonna invert that mask again and there you have it. It's selecting the interior of the car. So from there, we're just gonna add exposure here, maybe bring up the shadows a bit Again, I'm gonna be sensitive with the highlights and then bring the blacks down to add just a touch of contrast. But that's helping a ton already in balancing out the dynamic range of the photo. 
Now a couple final steps I'll do is come back to my toolkit and darken the lower parts of the photo. Essentially I want to draw my eye to the steering wheel. So then we'll darken the top a little bit as well. And then we'll just adjust exposure there. And again, this is coming in a touch blue for my liking. So let's maybe even just take the warmth slider and see if we can drag that forward to warm this photo up a little bit. And there you go. And maybe if we add a radial exposure, maybe it'll just help our eye be drawn to the center there. So there you have it, guys. It's a super quick tool to maximize the dynamic range in your photos using those AI tools. Now, as you guys can see, I use some of my presets today. I have a full toolkit here that you guys can stack on top of each other. It's a pretty unique product. I think you'll enjoy it. And I've also got V1 and V2 presets for you guys. So if you guys are wanting to support the channel, that is the best way to do it. Just check out the link in the description below. Pick up a set of presets and that will help me out a ton. Otherwise, guys, I really do appreciate your time and I hope that you found this lesson valuable and can incorporate it into your workflow. Again, I'd love it if you'd be a part of the community. Add to the conversation in the comments below. Consider subscribing to the channel, checking out this video. But otherwise, guys, I do really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.